That's true. Inshallah, next week, 6.45 will be Jamaat, Inshallah. Sorry for the wrong information, Inshallah. Tayyib, <coughs> Inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa la aqibatul muttaqeen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wa sayyidil mursaleen, nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Alhamdulillah, after Ramadan break, break, we are resuming, inshallah, this class of Riyadh al-Salihin, the Hadith class, um, which is uh, uh, Imam Nawabi Rahmatullah's compilation of uh, Sahih Ahadith from and the uh, authentic uh, Hadith compilations. Uh, and today's chapter is chapter number 51 of Riyadh al-Salihin, and starting hadith will be 412, inshallah. And the title of this chapter is Ar Raja, Babu Raja, the chapter of hope in Allah's mercy. And before Ramadan, it was a chapter of Allah's fear, what will happen in Akhira situation in the day of judgment, and what will happen uh, in the after judgment, and people. Uh, of hellfire, all this which will bring fear of Allah to us, that was finished before Ramadan, and after Ramadan we're starting with the chapter of hope. al khawfu or raja The fear and hope should come together. That the two pillars of Iman to make us, we are not totally despair of Allah's mercy, and also that we are we live in fear of Allah's you know, uh, punishment if we disobey him. Both a believer needed. Sometimes we need motivation, good news, uh, a reward to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes we need to uh, give our nafs some kind of uh, serious warnings that it will, uh, inshallah, come to a straight path. A straight path and it will uh, leave the scenes it will do sincere tawbah to Allah. So both together is a real iman. The true believer will not live with one. They will live with both two. Fear and hope. If you are fear of Allah, you have, you have no hope, this is not a good sign. It will make you that there is no hope. So why I am doing some good deed since there is no hope? You will give it up. And if you have no fear, you live in hope only, then it will be, uh, you will be deceived by shaitan. Don't worry, Allah is ghafur rahim Allah is merciful, that's enough. You don't need to do any action, you don't need to do tawbah. So a true believer lives with both. Especially in the time of the death, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, of course a believer will live with, uh, with both, fear and hope, but in the time of the death, when he's realizing his last time is uh, coming and in front of him, he is facing that, then at that time, one's hope in Allah's mercy should be increasing. You're more inclined to Allah's you know, mercy's hope. So that is the guidance in the Quran and in the Sunnah. So today, the hope in Allah's mercy is starting with some Quranic verses of uh, Surah Zumar, five number, Ayah number 53 Bada a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim Qul ya ibadi al-ladhina asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah inna allaha yaghfir al-dhunuba jami'a innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says say O my servants, O oh my slaves, who have transgressed against themselves by committing so much sins. You despair not of the mercy of Allah. Despair not of the mercy of Allah. Verily, Allah forgives all sins. Allah forgives all sins. Truly, He is oft forgiving, most merciful. The one who is oft forgiving and most merciful have hope in his mercy. So don't 
and lose the hope. Don't give it up. So continue, and you plead to Allah to forgive you. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is oft forgivable. He is, is oft forgiving and most merciful. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's name Al Rahim and Al Ghafur both. But which one is more used? Al Rahim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Very frequently he used word Al Rahman Al Rahim. Most kind and most merciful. This one is dominant. This one is dominant. So that is in our hope. Rahmati wasiat, kulla shay, the ayah is coming. And then, following verse, وَهَلْ نُجَازِي إِلَّا الْكَفُورِ in Surah 7, ayah number 17, and never do we punish, uh, except those who are ungrateful, which indicating to the disbelievers. The people of belief should have hope in Allah's mercy. They should not lose the hope. This adab only for the kuffar, for the believers, they may hope the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the last verse of today is Surah Al-Araf, ayah number 156. وَرَحْمَةِ وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ Okay. My mercy, or before that, another ayah, Inna qad uhiya ilayna anna al-adhaba ala man kathaba tawalla. Okay. For whom the adhab is, the punishment of akhirah, truly it has been revealed to us that the torment will be for him who denies, who disbelieves, who doesn't believe in Allah. For him, fi nari jahannama, خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا And those who may disbelieve and tawalla, those who, uh, you know, um, denies, who uh, turns away to come to Allah, to believe in Allah. For them only, فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا And those who are believers, they should hope Allah's mercy, even though some punishment they are suffering, but in the end, they will be getting Allah's mercy in the end after suffering. وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ The last one, Surah Al-A'raf, number 156. And my mercy embraces all things. وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ It covers all things. So it is much bigger. His rahma is much dominant than his even anger. So this is the main good news Allah gives to us. His Rahma covers everything. His Rahma is much wider. Uh, uh, that's why Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim is used with Bismillah, with uh, many, uh, in, in Surah Al-Fatiha, in many of the verses. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Rahma, hoping his Rahma, his mercy, then we are coming to the Ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, first hadith 412 today An Ubadah ibn Samit radiyallahu anhu qal qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man shahida an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh wa anna isa abdullahi wa rasooluh wa kalimatuhu alqaha ila maryam wa ruhum minh wal jannata haqq wa nara haqq أدخله الله الجنة على ما كان من العمل. الصحابة عبادة ابن صامت رضي الله عنه سيد. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سيد. He who bears witness that there is no true God except Allah alone, having no partner with Him, and that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his slave and his messenger. And Isa alayhi salam, Jesus is his slave and his messenger. And Jesus is his word, which he communicated to Maryam alayhi salam. And his spirit, which he sent to her, that Jannah is true and hell is true. Allah will make him enter Jannah, accepting whatever deeds he accomplished. 
So here some articles of Iman is mentioned. Believing in Allah and his messenger, also believing in Isa alayhi salam, all other prophets as well. And Isa alayhi salam's one is especially mentioned after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, because of some reason. Because the unique way Allah has created Isa alayhi salam, that confused many people without father. And that's why many people are, you know, making he is son of Allah because of this unique status. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he is not his son of course, he is Abdullah, he's Allah's servant, or Rasul and his messenger. And he's the words to Maryam. And a spirit he sent to her without that mechanism and process how a child is born. Avoiding that, straight away, some words of Allah, Kun, be, this is the word of Allah. When he wants, when he wills to create something, what he says? Kun. That's Ayakun, it becomes. So that is the word Kun, is the, the word sent to Maryam, and Ruh, spirit, came from Allah who believes that and then believes in Jannah, it is haq, it is true that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the akhirah, uh, the, he will send the believer to Jannah. And nar, hellfire is also haq, true, he believes, he has this yaqeen. Uh, he, Allah, with this kind of firm belief, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter him to Jannah, whatever his, you know, deeds are. It doesn't mean that a Muslim doesn't need to uh, uh, have uh, any deeds, good deeds, salihat in his life? Only believing this is enough? No. Believing truly this will make surely a Muslim is also proactive. He will not give up the good deeds. He will be not committing the sin. This the requirement of Iman is that he doesn't compromise with the basic deeds of the life. Then what kind of belief is it is? If belief is demonstrated with action, that is a true belief. Of course, our action-wise, there could be some shortcoming. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive this shortcoming. But if there is no deed at all, one is very happy, oh yes, I believe in Allah uh, and his messenger and Isa alayhi salam and all this, and I, I, I'll be entering Jannah without any deed. It is not the Iman. This is not the Iman. There are many other, other, other ahadiths will... Uh, inshallah demonstrate that this is not the real Iman. Real Iman is that a true believer will be proactive in doing as a good deeds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to do. Another riwayah of the Muslim came of, of this hadith, uh, some additional riwayah. Man shahida an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan rasulullah harrab allahu alayhi nar. That riwayah, that narration said who witnessed that uh, uh, there is no one what did he, no God uh, uh, is a true God uh, to be worshipped except Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make Jahannam is forbidden for him here Isa alayhi salam is not mentioned that is the additional one uh, the, the second rewaya is the true um, declaration of the faith as you know Sometimes we, when people declare the faith here, we also mention after Ashhadu uh, Allah ilaha illallah that Ashhadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Also, we say Ashhadu uh, Anna Isa Rasulullah. The Isa alayhi salam is also messenger of Allah. Additional, because especially those who come from the Christian background, they need to affirm that as well. Right? But Muhammad and Rasulullah, Kalima al Tawheed is Kalima al Shahada is saying, thus adding, I do witness. That is the additional word only. It is the same kalima that La ilaha illallah and Muhammad Rasulullah. We come to the hadith number 413. And Abi Dharrin radiallahu anhu qal, qal al nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yaqulu allahu azza wa jal, man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha aw aziyad. This is a hadith qudsi. Because of Hadith Qudsi, Prophet Sallallahu said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said. When Prophet said Hadith without referring to Allah, 
that is called Hadith Nabawi. And when he refers to Allah, he narrates from Allah with the words of Allah, this is called Hadith Qudsi. Uh, hadith Qudsi is a bit higher status than general prophetic Ahadith. Because here, according to most of the scholars, Prophet ﷺ narrates words of Allah, not only the message. That's why it's called Hadith Qudsi. The words are directly from Allah to the Prophet ﷺ. And other Ahadith, prophetic Ahadith, words, expression is from Rasulullah ﷺ, his own making the sentences, but the message came from Allah. Is it, is it difference clear? Huh? Clear, inshallah? Okay. Right. Um, so what Allah SWT says in this Hadith Qudsi Man jaa bil hasanat falahu ashru amthaliha Whoever does a good deed will have reward ten times like it multiplied the reward ten times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so generous He'll not give reward one time or, or two times or three times holding it, no minimum ten times this majestic gift of the reward is not just one reward. It doesn't match with the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his, his mercy, his rahma. Minimum ten times. But our azir or it could be more. The word here, our azir or azidu, there is two narrations. Azir, it will be given more. But if you say azid, I will multiply it even more. And some of the hadith said, how much Allah may multiply? Up to 700 times. So 10, 20, maybe 100, maybe 200, maybe 300. And some people are so fortunate. Their good deed is so liked by Allah, so sincere, so caring, so obedient to Allah. Allah may multiply them up to 700 times. If you recite one letter minimum is 10, you know, reward, it, but it could be 700. Even it could be beyond 700. Because in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wala dayna mazid. I have more additional to give to you. That is a hadith giving us the endless mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his generosity. Opposite to that, Contrasting other on the sin. Woman jaa bi sayyia, fa jaza u sayyia tin sayyia tin mithluha awa akfir. And if somebody committed a sin, okay, whosoever does commit something sinful act, what will have the punishment like it? Similar amount of the sin, one time only. One sin is written, not ten times. But our outfit, I could forgive it even. Because the servant committed sin and realized, ask Allah forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his own mercy, he could be even forgiving that sin even. That is a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. And then he is so inviting us to make us closer to us. Closer to us. You know, like sometimes uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above any example, any similitude. But you can see sometimes the children could be naughty. You know, they did something wrong and they go away from the parents, from the mother. Mother is still inviting, still inviting, still inviting, uh, trying to call. So, uh, because the children don't know. But the parents, the mother is so much caring of the ch children. So they will not give it up. They will be hoping the child will come to her. There is an example came by one of the scholars. He was leading Salah in the masjid. And when he was going to home, uh, you know, uh, he, uh, coming to the masjid, he found a, a, a young naughty boy is sleeping on the doorstep of his house. And when he came back from the Salah, coming back, and he found mother came to uh, kiss him, to hug him, uh, the story is uh, that, that the boy did something wrong and mom, mom was a bit upset, uh, uh, upset 
and then uh, he, she uh, maybe uh, told him off, blaming him for something or you know some kind of uh, discipline he's making with her. So he gone away. He, he ran away from the home. And he was, you know, running, moving around, maybe a couple of hours, and it is too hot, sunny day, and he became tired, and he was, uh, you know, uh, in the end, coming to the door of the mom, and mom was upset, and she didn't open the door, and stayed in the sunset, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the sunlight, long time, and then he was, you know, fell asleep, in sleep. Then after a while, mom came and found son is in the sand, lying down, sleeping, tired. He, you know, hugged him and kissed him, said, my son, why you do all this with me? I do take care of you, my son, and he kissing and having, uh, hugging the son. So the scholar said, people see this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more caring than the mother uh, to the son. So how we go away from Allah? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inviting us. You have committed sin. So you want to come forward to me? You want to have a, a closeness to me? Come. So he's saying, وَمَنْ تَقَرَّبَ مِنِّ شِبْرًا تَقَرَّبْتُ مِنْهُ ذِرَاعًا Okay? Right? So, uh, whoever come to me uh, by one uh, span, one span closer to me, I will approach him by one cubit, double the span, towards him to accept his tawbah and to give him tawfiq. And whoever approaches me by one cubit, I approach him by one tatham, double. harwalatan. And whosoever comes to me walking, I do go to him running to rescue him, to hold him, to bring him forward. So if we are walking to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is running to us, meaning he is more keen than even us. That is his mercy. وَمَنْ لَقِيَانِ بِقُرَابِ الْأَرْضِ خَطِيئَةً لَا يُشْرِكُ بِشَيْئًا لَقِيتُهُ بِمِثْلِهَا مَغْفِرَةً And who meets me with an earth load of sins. His sin is so much, whole planet, planet is full of his sin. And he comes to me, he dies without any uh, shirk with me, without associating anything with me. I meet him with forgiveness like that, like same amount. So with the tawheed, pure tawheed, may Allah forgive many sins. That's why the importance of tawheed in our life that we are away from any kind of shirk. That has a very good news, that once many sins will be forgiven because of the true belief of Tawheed. That's what you need to know, is there any kind of shirk we are you know, engaged with? That's the knowledge of Tawheed, knowledge of pure, pure Iman, pure Aqeedah is very important. So one can differentiate between Tawheed and shirk, and then away from any kind of shirk, such a good news. However, still, will not say that I have a pure aqi aqidah, so inshallah, whatever sin I commit, no problem at all. Don't be in that status. Don't be in that uh, mindset. Because a true believer will be always fearful of his sins. Here there is hope, but again, uh, we must have this. Good news of Allah, he may forgive many of the sins, but he also mentioned that anybody is committing sin, doesn't do tawbah, may Allah punish him as well. So a Muslim will come with the balance of both hope and fear. Then coming to hadith number 414, and Jabirin radiallahu anhu qal, jaa a'rabiyun ila nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqal, ya rasulallah, مَلْ مُوجِبَتَانِ فَقَالَ مَنْ مَاتَ لَا يُشْرِكُ بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَنْ مَاتَ يُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا دَخَلَ النَّارِ 
Jabir radiallahu reported that a Bedouin came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and asked a question, O Messenger of Allah, what are the two imperatives which lead to Jannah or hell? Okay, could you tell me something very fundamental which may make Jannah is uh, uh, achievable and I am safe from the hellfire or other way what two main reasons people may end up going to Jahannam and will be missing Jannah what are the main things Ya Rasulullah you must tell me for my you know, assurance that I am going to Jannah and I am safe from hellfire then he said Man mata la billah shayyan dakhla jannah who, who dies in a state that he doesn't commit any shirk with Allah. No partner with Allah. Okay? And opposite to that, if anybody, so he'll enter jannah. Uh, other anybody, mata ishriku bihi shayyan, he commits shirk, but he didn't do tawbah, died with shirk, then surely he'll be entering hellfire. Just in the Quran, many of the verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Whoever committed shirk, hmm? he said, in the shirk Allah dhulmun azim. Shirk is the biggest injustice. Faqat habit amalu. His all good deeds, whatever deeds, all destroyed with shirk, nothing is accepted to Allah. فَقَدْ خَسِرَ خُسْرَانَ مُبِينَ He made a big loss. There is no recovery from that. So, so that is the Tawheed and Shirk is the most important matter. Subhanallah, if you go to the Muslim world, I know many Muslims, even they pray, they go for Hajj and Umrah, they fast at Ramadan, but they commit Shirk. They'll be going to a shrine of a saint, so-called saint, and they will be believing in that, in this shrine, that my, you know, uh, um, important uh, prayer will be accepted uh, through this grave, through this shrine. Hmm. Hmm? <laughs> Maqam Ibrahim, we are doing sujood to it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So two things, going to the visit the graveyard, it is of course encouraged, allowed. And it, it is only purpose is, it is your ibadah, you'll be getting reward of visiting a grave. And it is a reminder for you, your own akhirah. And you make dua for the mayyid, for the deceased. Not anything getting from him. This big difference. If you go to a grave, either it is a normal Muslim, ordinary Muslim, or it is somebody, you know, alhamdulillah, uh, maybe even a prophet's grave. Okay? You go to visit, you are not getting anything in the prophet's grave. Or any, uh, one, any good Muslim, any good servant of Allah, you are not expecting anything to get from him. You are doing favor to him, giving salat and salam to him, to the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course. In a, for our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there's a special something will come from us. What is it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, once you visit the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us that Allah will give his soul back to him so he can answer our salam. He can answer our salam. But am I allowed to say, oh Prophet of Allah, I'm visiting a grave, please, I'm in trouble. Could you help me something about? This is shirk. So you are getting to give salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will answer your salam, but he'll be not able to answer your dua. Our dua will be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if it is with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he cannot uh, answer any prayer of us except giving, you know, uh, yeah, responding to our uh, salam, uh, answering our salam only. Then 
who are this in the shrine, this great saint will be, uh, you know, uh, solving our problems. I was visiting Cyprus, there is a, a grave of a Sahabia, uh, Umm al-Haram bint Milhan, radiallahu anha. I think her, uh, she is known as Umm al-Haram bint Milhan. She is one of the relatives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, uh, after eating in her home, uh, he was uh, sleeping and he was uh, um, uh, sleeping and he uh, woke up while smiling. He said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, why are you smiling? He said, I have shown that my ummah uh, has conquered the island of Kobros, Cyprus. And those who will be going there, participating in that ghazwa, they'll be going to Jannah. She said, Ya Rasulullah, can you make dua for me? I can be part of that group. And she was part of that group. Uh, it was in the time of Muawiyah, he has sent a naval fleet to conquer this island. She was part of them. And when she on, when there, she, uh, uh, her camel, you know, uh, an accident for her, she fell down for her camel, and she died there. Her grave is there even until now. Umm al-Haram bin Milhan, radiallahu anha, in Cyprus. And if you go there, subhanallah, many trees around all these, you know, people's uh, plastic bags is hanged, maybe thousands, all trees around her grave. People, uh, they are hoping their uh, wish could be fulfilled through making something there. So by shirk. And if you go to many other Muslim countries, they have all this. And these people may pray sometimes, they go hajj, they do umrah, they do fasting of Ramadan, nothing will be accepted. Rather, they have committed big zulm. So this is a pure tawheed is so important in the aqidah of Muslim. And that's why we need to understand what is shirk and what is tawheed. Only aqidah lessons, aqidah books, aqidah knowledge will clarify this without that a Muslim could be very sincere but he could be going to the shirk. Yeah. brother is asking a question, yeah, of course, uh, is it allowed for us to ask someone, brother, can you make dua for me, I'm going through such difficulty in my life, can we ask, is it considered, is it shirk, if somebody is alive, and somebody is dead, big difference first of all here, the one who is dead, he is disconnected from us, he cannot do any dua for us, Allah didn't allow for him to make any dua. For those who are alive, we are allowed to make dua for each other. It is allowed. You can make dua for your children. Children can make dua for their parents. Is it? In? Same way any Muslim can ask dua to anybody. But if you believe oh, this is a person, he is a saint-like. <laughs> and his dua will be accepted. Let me I go and catch him. Can he make dua for me? This is too much. Okay. But we can, I can ask you, you can ask me, you can ask him, he can ask you. So this is, alhamdulillah, we do this favor to each other. May Allah, you know, there is hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, especially if somebody is absent, not present in front of you. He makes dua for you, uh, your dua will be more accepted for you. Okay? If you say, oh, my brother, uh, he is in, you know, uh, in Africa, he's in Mecca, he's in Indonesia, Allah, I don't see him. Allah, I know I heard he's ill. Allah, can you uh, cure him? Allah, make him his better. This dua is more accepted again. Okay? And when you make this dua, 
The an angel beside you says, Amin, Allahumma Amin. He makes dua, Amin. And he said, Allah ka mithlu. Allah ka mithlu. And you will be given the same. May Allah give you the same. So this is a dua we are allowed to each other. But to have some special trust, no, my dua will be not accepted. He is a very good brother, mashallah, let him go, catch him. His dua will be accepted. Then it come a level that will bring holiness to somebody. <laughs> and that's why in all this uh, wrong thing come in aqidah. Nobody can say surely he is a holy man. Or he is a, 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 a really, I cannot certify about anybody, you cannot certify about anybody. Allah knows. Allah knows who has more taqwa. Who have a good faith of everyone. Alhamdulillah, that's fine. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khairan. So big difference, the one who dead, khalas. We don't ask him, them anything. But those who are alive, even like I can ask you a favor, can you rather give me a lift? Uh, I have some difficulty. Yes, it's allowed. Same way, can you make dua for me? Yes, it is allowed. Alhamdulillah. Right. Now, another hadith narrated by Sahabi Mu'ad radiallahu anhu, when he was riding uh, on the beast, on the animal with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa maybe a camel, maybe a donkey, uh, um, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to use both of these, and sometimes even horse, but most of the times camel and donkey he used to use. So, and when he used to uh, ride a, a, a beast, behind him, sometimes Ibn Abbas, sometimes Mu'ad ibn Tawal, sometimes uh, um, Zaid ibn Haritha, he will be taking somebody if he goes somewhere a bit longer journey. So this time, uh, Mu'ad says, I was behind him, riding with him, behind him uh, on the beast. As soon as I got an opportunity, he was, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was so keen, when he is with anybody, uh, either Sahabi will be asking him some knowledge, or he will be giving them some knowledge. This is a, a, a proactive agenda of the Sahaba and Rasulullah Sallallahu both. That they were always keen uh, to uh, learn Islam and he was always keen to teach them. So he said in this journey, Ya Mu'ad, called him, O Mu'ad, and Mu'ad radiallahu says, I said, Labbaika, Ya Rasulullah, Wa Sadaik, O Prophet of Allah, I'm here. Uh, responding to you and at your pleasure, at your service, Ya Rasulullah, please. Qala Ya Mu'ad, again he's calling him without giving the uh, message. Ya Mu'ad, said yes, Ya Rasulullah, I'm responding to your call and I'm at your service, Ya Rasulullah, anything I can do for you? Qala Ya Mu'ad, third time, same thing. Then after the third time calling Ya Mu'ad, Ya Mu'ad, Ya Mu'ad, and then he's giving the message. Ma min abdin, yashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Okay, he said, uh, whenever there is a person witnessed, Allah ilaha illallah, there is no one uh, uh, true God except Allah, wa anna muhammadan abduhu, wa rasul and uh, muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is allah's servant and messenger sidqan min qalbihi he says it truly from his heart believing truly he said that this is this kind of a statement this kind of declaration of faith now and then he does with true sincerity Illa harramahu Allahu ala nar. That surely Allah will make his haram upon the hellfire. He is forbidden for the hellfire. Hellfire is forbidden for him that he will be saved totally from the hellfire. So truly believing in Allah, giving this statement, will make sure he is saved from hellfire. By hearing this good news, Mu'ad radiallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, afala ukhbiru biha nasa fa yastabshiru? He said, oh, Allah, shall I not then inform people this good news, good, glad tidings? Should I inform them? They should be excited of this, 
glad tidings. He said, no, don't say, don't say to them generally. Even yet take okay? Then they will rely on it alone. And they're not proactively doing any good deeds. I truly believe in Allah and the Messenger. Khalas. Jahannam will be haram. I truly believe it. So he'll be not praying, not doing fasting of Ramadan. So some people may misunderstand this. So don't say to anybody. Okay, right. He don't say to anybody. But he said it now, it came to us. <laughs> How it came to us? He said, uh, Anas said, Anas is narrating this story from Mu'ad radiallahu anhu. Anas is much younger than Mu'ad radiallahu anhu. Uh, then later on, when Mu'ad died, Anas radiallahu anhu said, فأخبر بها even فأخبر بها مؤاذ عند موته تأثمان but only مؤاذ says when he's in deathbed he got idea maybe he's coming his life came to end he need to inform the hadith of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم if he doesn't inform that could it be sinful he was now looking another hadith uh, the hadith is uh, the hadith is that man katama ilma who knows some knowledge but didn't spread this knowledge he, he, he did hide it Allah will make him his mouth is covered with a saddle call it with a, you know some kind of mouth uh, uh, it's must type of thing that he or some kind of uh, you know when, when the animal is sometimes given like dog sometimes given some kind of muzzle okay. yeah, his face will be muzzled with some kind of muzzle okay in the day of judgment with the, just, just muzzle the muzzle of fire because he did hide some knowledge of Islam so this hadith is a knowledge of Islam so he thought probably Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, didn't allow him to tell in the beginning Sahaba could misunderstand, but now all Sahaba and Tabi'un who came after him, they understand the clear message of Islam. They know it is iman and amal salihat all together will be only saving them. So there is no harm of telling it now. And if I don't tell it now, I may be hiding the knowledge and dying with this. I don't want to die with this. That's why he said it. So it came to us. So there is no room for someone to mis misunderstand. Iman only is enough. Okay? That is a position of people of Murjeah. You have heard about people of Murjeah? It's called Irja, that you only live in hope of Allah's mercy. I believe in Allah's mercy. And uh, with the Iman, no sin is a problematic for you. This is the position of people of Murja'ah. That if you have Iman in Allah, there is no fear for you. Khalas. So this is their position. They got it from Christianity. I was um, reading one Bible in Arabic. It came to, to me. And I found, they said, uh, you know, the, the Bible says, if you are looking for a good deed, then you don't believe in Jesus. Then there is no service of Jesus. The main service is just believe in Jesus. And khalas, so that you get automatically forgiveness of all sins. But if you go for action, as if you don't believe with the Jesus. Subhanallah. So the, the people of Murjia got this in, influence from the Christianity. That believe enough for you. Allah is Ghafur Rahim, Allah is merciful, all this. Why you need to put the action? Then why Allah is merciful? Why Allah is Ghafur Rahim? <laughs> Absolutely, there are the two opposite sects. One is Khawarij, one is Murjia. Khawarij says if you are committing Kabira sin, Khalas. You are not in Islam. You have no hope. 
Ahlul Kabair, those who committed major sins, they should be going to hellfire. And Murjia say, don't worry, you just have an iman in Allah, Allah's mercy will take you. Don't worry. So this is the two opposite sects in Islam. Okay? Yeah. Regarding the knowledge, the one who actually come to the class, we learn something. Does that apply to us? Because a lot of time you can't join to people, they don't want to listen to you. Okay. So uh, the question is uh, that if you are uh, learning, coming to the circle, learning, and you tell others they're not believing you, is it? No, no. You, you, you can't tell people what you learn because people are not really wanting to listen to what you have to say because they feel an environment where you're teaching someone or you're telling someone. Mm. It's like generally a lot of us, we don't tell the, everyone what we learn mm. because we keep it to ourselves and we try to do it. Okay, I understand now. That we, what we learn from the circle, from the knowledge, from the kitab, from the lecture, you know, we don't normally spread this knowledge. We keep it in ourselves. Is it not considered as a sin that you learn, you did not spread it? Yes, up to a certain extent, that's true. That's why everyone, you know, Balligu anni wa aya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You are muballig, you are. Uh, you know, conveyor on behalf of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. shahid al Yes, he wanted, uh, you know, anything you learn, you convey to others as well. Of course, in addition to your own practice. And this way, knowledge should be spread. And that is the way, it's not only through knowledge circle, I each can say through uh, giving dawah. You know, when you, uh, somebody non-practicing. So you are uh, making him, he's coming to Islam, he's praying, he is uh, giving up all these sins, you talk to him, this is knowledge. Your children, your family. You save yourself and your family, your wife, your husband, your children, uh, all household from hellfire. So this is an obligation. This is an obligation. There, there is a limit of obligation and there is a level of obligation, of course. The one who is more knowledgeable, more in a position of informing others, like an imam, you know, he has a bigger duty. Imam of the small masjid has maybe a smaller task. And if it, a bigger masjid he has a bigger task. The one who has access to the more, you know, uh, uh, opportunity he has, his, his volume of, of task is increasing. Any ordinary humble Muslim, he has some duty. Kullukum, subhanallah, the hadith is, Kullukum ra'ina, kullukum masulun an ra'iyatihi. Yes, jazakallah. Kullukum ra'ina, kullukum masulun an ra'iyatihi. Every one of you shepherd. And you'll be answerable for your own flock. This is. Family, this could be a wider uh, responsibility of leadership and uh, influential position. You are responsible for that. Okay? So, and uh, everyone is da'il Allah. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linna sta'muruna bil ma'aruf wa tanhawna anil munkar. We have gone through this chapter before. So, every uh, Muslim is a da'i as well. And ta'wa has different, you know, according to your level and your ability and your situation. So nobody is totally for himself. Okay, so yes, whatever we learn, we try to practice and try to also communicate to others. This is amana of the ilm. That's true. Jazakallah khair. And then coming to hadith number 416, uh, it is a long hadith from Sahabi Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu and also another Sahabi Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu anhu, both of them narrated, uh, or uh, the, the narrator from him, he was confused, it is Abu Huraira or Abu Sa'id al Khudri, okay. Uh, then it is the story they are narrating from Ghazwat al Tabuk, uh, in, in, the, in the expedition of Tabuk, okay. What happened? The Tabuk was a uh, 
you know, uh, expedition Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, you know, uh, went for to face the Roman, um, you know, uh, force. Although battle did not take place, but it was a difficult journey of hundreds of miles from Medina uh, to to go and come back. Uh, and in the, this long journey, they carried with them some kind of food, and in the, in the middle of the journey, food came to uh, shortage and many other uh, you know, suffering. A lot of miracles happened. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi made dua in, in, a, in, a, in a fountain, which was almost dried. Little bit of water left, and he made his udu, and he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and throw back the water to the fountain, almost the dead fountain, dried fountain, and it became full of water. So many of the miracles happen in this journey. So one of the miracles in story is narrated by the Sahabi, uh, the Asaba Nasa Maja'atan. Okay? The people uh, are, you know, uh, you know, uh, his, that, uh, uh, you know, some kind of uh, food shortage started over there, and then, فَقَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَوْ أَذِنْتَ لَنَا فَنَحَنَّا الْنَوَادِحَنَا فَأَكَلْنَا وَدَّحَنَّا They ask him permission, if he grant us permission to slaughter our camels to eat and use their fat for our, you know, to, you know eating the flesh. And fat could be staying longer time. Later on, they could be using this fat, warming it, heating it, and then eating with the bread, of course. That's what they are referring to. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِفْعَلُوا And he ordered, okay, do some slaughter, some of the, you know, uh, camels, uh, slaughter it. Alhamdulillah, we need to eat something because all food came to end. Now we have to eat our, some of the camels, uh, you know, um, to slaughter and uh, we have to uh, live with some food. Then Umar came, uh, uh, the, the, that many of the camels are slaughtered, if more camels is slaughtered, then their journey to the Tabuk will be difficult. Maybe if there's another day they are again slaughtering, then what will happen? Uh, at that time, it is the only vehicle they have. So Umar said, O Prophet of Allah, that, uh, that uh, the, uh, many of the camels are slaughtered, and then we shall suffer from lack of transportation after you know, a few days, it's not a good idea to sort out the animals or the camels this way. Then Rasulullah said, He also requested, Ya Rasulullah, if you make dua to Allah, what is the remaining food we have that Allah give more barakah that we don't need to slaughter any more the camels? Okay? So make dua that we don't need to slaughter further our camels. The remaining food cannot you make dua for a barakah, so Allah make barakah in our remaining food. Okay? Right. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Naam, okay, good idea, fine. Then, eh, So then, a big, uh, you know, uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, a leather of the animal, a uh, mat from, from the leather made on the floor, okay? And he uh, told the people, they bring all of your food here, okay? So everybody came with their remaining food stuff. Somebody had a little bit of corn left with a little bit of bread left with some of the, you know, amount of the debts left. So, uh, so people brought all this food stuff they had. He said, make piles. The debts are one pile. The beds are one pile, the other stuff one pile, make all here in this mat. So they brought all this to him, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, he said, he, uh, he, he, all for the gather, he made dua to Allah, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give barakah in our food. Okay? So he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he said, khudhu fi awiyatikum. Okay? And uh, then said, bring all of your empty buckets, and bags, and boxes, and fill this food. Ya Allah, fill this food. Okay? Okay. And they made all empty buckets, all empty baskets, all empty bags, 
food of food stuff. And Sahaba are very pleased. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, the shortage of food, the food crisis is gone. Then after see their happiness, and they, they have ate, MashaAllah, they have, uh, MashaAllah, kept for something for future. MashaAllah, good. Then he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anni rasulullah la yalqa Allah bihi ma abdun ghayru shakin fa yuhdawu anil janna then after praising Allah of this his ni'ma baraka in the food he said one good statement that uh, uh, that i uh, any slave who meets Allah testifying there is no one true god except Allah and that i am his messenger without entertaining any doubt about these two fundamentals will not be banished from entering Jannah. So anybody having this shahada, this iman, this tawheed, uh, uh, he meets Allah without any doubt. He has firm belief in this. He will be not deprived from Jannah. He will be having given access to Jannah. So again, this is reaffirming the pure tawheed kalima to shahada with that firm belief to secure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure and jannah. Again, not without deliberately missing all good deeds now. But the shahada itself is very powerful. And good shahada, good iman will bring all good deeds with. And any shahada without from without act, without some kind of practice, without basic requirement, is false claim of shahada. That could not be true belief. True belief must be pushing you to do good deed. I remember back home somebody, I know very, he died now, may Allah forgive him. He's a Muslim. Was not used to pray. Not used to go. I know him. That is seldom on Friday, maybe he'll be praying. And he, he, he was almost neighbor of us. So many years ago, around 30 years ago probably, I tell you my brother, you know, he goes to his home, between my home and his home, there is a graveyard. He goes across this graveyard to home. I say, you know, see all this graveyard here. He crossed this grave every day, you know, coming and out his day. One day we go not going there. So why don't you fear fear Allah? Don't you pray? My brother, don't worry. Allah is oft merciful. He's oft forgiving. He's merciful. He's kind. Allah is Rahman and Rahim. This, this uh, true belief is right, but it is true belief will not make him is only saying that. True belief will push him to do the basic duty of Islam. Then hadith number 417, the last hadith today, inshallah, and Itban ibn Malik in radiallahu anhu, ahu mimman shahida badran, the sahabi Itban who witnessed battle of Badr, this is a special status. You know, sahaba badriyun, those participating in the Badr, they are in the good book of Allah. They have the, you know, in almost the first uh, category of the sahaba. And followed by those um, those um, uh, became Muslim after Badr, Battle of Badr. So big, uh, 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 one class upper than other people who took Shahada after Battle of Badr. Because many people were writing in Arabia, see first battle, see which who wins in the battle. battle. If uh, Arab uh, uh, Quraysh wins that is they are right. If Muhammad wins and people of Medina, is, he is right. So some people see the smaller number got victory against a bigger number of Quraysh, then other Bedouin, other Arab people say, oh yeah, it seems he is right. This battle of Badr given this evidence. So now we can take Shahada. <laughs> so they fall in the second category. And some people waited for the third category. when. Prophet conquered Makkah, they are waiting for the Luxi, Makkah and Medina having this, you know, many battles. See, in the end, who is getting the upper hand? When the Makkah fall, uh, Makkah is conquered, 
then the remaining people of Arab Peninsula took Shahada. They are in third category. Okay? So that's why Badri Sahabi are so fortunate they will be in number one list. Kuntu Usalli li qawmi bani Salih. This Sahabi Uthman said, I was leading my prayer, my, my uh, you know, local Muslim prayer at my tribe. I was the Imam. وَكَانَ يَحُولُ بَيْنِ وَبَيْنَهُ وَادٍ إِذَا جَاءَتِ الْأَخْطَارِ Okay. He said, I come to Medina, and I went back to my family to lead their, their salah late. So every time I come to Medina, I, uh, and I go back, they wait for me to pray behind me, especially Isha. Whenever there is some kind of rainfall comes, فَيَشُكُّ عَلَيْهُ اشْتِعَدْهُ قِبَلَ مَسْجِدِهِمْ So when it is... Um, there is a valley between uh, uh, me and those people. Whenever it rains, it becomes difficult for me uh, to cross it for going to their mosque. So I came to Rasulullah sallallahu and I said to him, Ya Rasulullah, inni ankartu basari wa in al wadi al ladi bayni wa bayna qawmi yasilu idha jaat al amtar fa yashukwa alayhi istiyazu. Ya Rasulullah, you can see I am now weak, my eyesight because of old age. And I know I need to go to my uh, family home to lead their prayer of, of the, my local village. But one huge rainfall, I cannot cross this, you know, valley which is full of water uh, when it's rainfall. So what I, I request to you, Rasulullah, فَوَضِدْتُ أَنَّكَ تَأْتِ فَتُصَلِّي فِي بَيْتِي مَكَانًا أَتَّخِذُ مُصَلَّى Can you, can I request you that you come to my house? who is this side of the valley. So you may pray in my house, in my prayer uh, in space. So I later on, when my eyesight will not allow you to come to Medina to pray behind you, and then going, coming back to my home. So I, that time, if I'm unable to attend, at least I will be having some kind of comfort that I'm praying in the same space where my prophet prayed for me. So I am missing maybe going to attend prophetic masjid to pray behind you. Can you do this favor for me? Then he said, Sa'afal, I'll do it. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came, fixed a day following day, and he um, um, took a journey to that village uh, with him, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, uh, uh, together. When the Nahar, Mashtad the Nahar, when, uh, you know, the sun was so, uh, uh, you know, uh, giving heat in the almost, in uh, approaching midday, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam almost arrived to my home yeah, around midday, the whole time, or close to the whole time. But I then to Lahu, he was asked, he seeking permission, can I enter to your home? I have given him uh, permission to enter my home. And he said, he didn't sit down first. He said, Aina tuhibba nusalia min baitika. Show me the place, the corner. You will like that I will be praying there. Fa ashartu lahu ila al makani ladi uhibbu an yusalia fihi. So I was indicating to the corner at the place which I would like him to pray there. Fa qama Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fa kabbara wa safafna wa ra'ahu. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up to pray, started, and he did takbir, tahrim Allahu akbar. And we lined behind him, make the uh, saf, fasalla rakatain. He led our two rakah salah. It could be some kind of nafal prayer, not the first one. Thumma sallama. And then he made taslim salam to both sides, came out of the salah. Wa sallamna hina sallama. We did finish salah with him. Fahabastuhu ala khaziratin tusna'u lahu. Then I detained him for a meal called khazira some kind of the local dish I made. Uh, uh, then, Then what happened? I made this meal for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and with one guest with him, of course, this uh, small amount of food, the khazira, our local food, local dish. Then people around our village, all, everybody heard Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is visiting my home. They all came now. Many people run, rush to my house, and my house is full with the men now. 
what I do now with this food now? Good for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and another person. فَقَالَ رَجْلٌ مَا فَعَلَ مَالِكٌ لَا أَرَاهُ Then uh, one of the men said, the Sahabi's name was Malik. Okay? I don't, Malik, what he did it? He, Prophet came, and he should know that many people would be coming. Why he cook, arrange a small amount of food? What he will be doing now, all people came here. فَقَالَ رَجْلٌ ذَلِكَ مُنَافِقَ لَا يُحِبُّ لَا رَسُولَ and one of them, they may come in, this man is a munafiq. You know, he wanted to humiliate the Prophet. You know, with this awkward situation. He invited him, and he did prepare only a small amount of food. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, He said to this man, don't make this comment. He's munafiq. لَا تَقُلْ ذَلِكَ أَلَا تَرَاهُ قَالَ لَا إِلْهَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ يَبْتَغِي بِذَلِكَ وَجْهَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى Do not you see? He was truly saying, La ilaha illallah. Huh? He believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's sincerely saying that, this is a statement. Okay. Okay. Right? Faqala Allah wa Rasulu alam. Then this man who made comment, he's a munafiq. He said, Allah and his messenger know best. I don't know. <laughs> Okay. But for, uh, apart from, you know, for, for us, what is our experience is, uh, this man, you know, uh, you know uh, this man is, uh, we see him, we never saw him, but helping and talking with the hypocrites. We sometimes talk to the monophicians as well. So they were, you know, making some comment about him negatively that he has this problem. He may be, he's talking to some munafiq sometime. Maybe he's also munafiq. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ حَرَّمَ عَلَى النَّارِ بَنْ قَالَ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ يَبْتَغِي بِذَلِكَ وَجْهَ اللَّهِ He's giving message to those sahabi who made command. Look, look. If anybody says truly, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ He believes from his, really from his heart, he says this word, you should know that seeking Allah's pleasure with these words, surely Allah will make Jahannam forbidden for him, haram for him. He will be saved from the Jahannam with this statement. Again, this is like previous hadith, truly believing in Allah and the Messenger, this Iman and Tawheed is a big saver of, uh, of Muslim from Jahannam with true belief, with pure Tawheed. Again, this sh should not exclude the requirement of Tawheed, which is putting in action what we learn and putting in action the Aqidah we have. Uh, it is a very big chapter, mashallah. So uh, we'll be stopping here today, taking some questions, inshallah. Uh, if you have, barakallah fikum. So next time we'll be starting with Hadith number 418, inshallah. And today's date is 11th of 5th. Okay, barakallah fikum. Is any issue? Okay. Alhamdulillah. So, if there is no issue, inshallah, I will conclude, inshallah. Jazakumullah khayyam. Subhanakallah. Ma bihamdika. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru wa atubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khari khalqi sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sabi alihi wa alihi. Inshallah, next week, our class, hopefully, salah is 7.45, 6.45, inshallah. We'll continue our process, inshallah. Barakallah fikum. Hayyakum Allah. Allah yibar fik. Kul aam. Wa tayyibun. Taqabballa amin alakum sali amal. Jazakum la khair. Barakallah fikum. Hayyakum Allah. Zakallah khair. Kamakallah. Azakallah. How are you? Good? Shall I have to say?